Hello everyone, welcome to Adventures in Astronomy. I was really hoping to show you this app that will save you hundreds of pounds outside, but the weather outside just stinks. In fact, it's been raining since about 1972. It just doesn't seem to clear up around here. But that's not going to stop me showing you this app indoors so that if you want to download it for £1.99 from the App Store, um, then you can use it too. You are going to need one of these, an iPhone. There is a version that works in Android and I will post some links to that, but it's not called Dark Sky Meter, which is the app we're going to be looking at. It might be worth understanding why you'd want to use an SQM meter. Well, if you're an astrophotographer, you really want to gauge how dark the skies are. Are you in a good location for astrophotography? Most of us can eyeball that, but a SQM meter does give you more information. Maybe that you're doing it for environmental reasons. Maybe you want to prove your point to the council that there's, there's too much light pollution in your local area or wildlife is being effective. This is a, a perfectly valid app that you can use that will show that. Or maybe you're even a camper and you just want to find a nice dark location for stargazing. If you want to know how SQM relates to the Bortle scale, then I've done a video on the Bortle scale. Uh, you're looking for the video entitled Holidays Under Dark Sky. So do go and have a look for that for some more information. So what does dark sky meter actually do? Well, it does measure your SQM. You'll see that if you go to some websites to buy an SQM meter, which many of us have done, they cost about 150, 200 pounds. But this app at £1.99 saves all that. And a little bit of Google searching and searching through the web shows that people who've actually bought an SQM meter and use this app have found that it's, it's within 0.1 or 0.2 accurate. Now, on the SQM meter in the app, you'll find that 0 0.1, 0.2 is, is still incredibly accurate with a properly dedicated SQM meter. So it's well worth the money. So I'm gonna show you this app and uh, you're on the on-screen controls, you'll see uh, a couple of my favorite apps there, but we're gonna hit dark sky meter. I can't believe how many people don't actually know this app exists. Um, it's one I've talked to other people before and they weren't aware of it. So hopefully this really raises the profile. Um, and it, this interface is incredibly easy. So down at the bottom, you've got the meter part, which is the, the bit that we're going to concentrate on. I wouldn't actually recommend the some of the other tabs. So the clouds bit will basically give you a forecast. But if you're booting this up from scratch, it can actually take a little bit of time to find out um, the, the, the cloud and the seeing. It's useful, but it can take a little bit of a while. On the map section, though, this is quite useful. You can have a look around the country at other people who've used this app and they've put their sky quality meters on there and the little dots denote various things. So the yellow dot denotes uh, not great quality readings, whereas the black dots indicate reasonably good dark skies. So if we go to the actual meter section itself, it's such an easy interface. All you've got to do is take a dark and to do the dark, uh, you, you press the dark button, then you cover your camera sensor. I usually do mine just with my hand and there it is, it's done. And then all you've got to do is aim your camera up at the sky and press button number two and it takes a sky reading. Obviously, as we're not outside and it's raining, we're, we're not going to actually, we have actually got a reading from my skylight above. So 16.89, that would be pretty terrible. By the way, just a little bit of information about what these numbers actually mean. An SQM of uh, 18 or less is, is, is pretty poor skies. On screen, there is a table that maps it to the Bortle scale. So uh, that would be nine. It would be a very light polluted uh, city area, perhaps. But it starts to go down the scale. Once you get to 20 to 20.7, you're in fairly decent skies. And the vast majority of my readings have come in around 20.7, if not a little bit higher at 21. So I'm often where I live between a bottle four and five scale. So the scale does go from largely 18 to 22 plus. If you're in 22 plus, congratulations, you're in very dark skies. So it just helps to understand the reading that you've taken uh, and in, in context. So it can be quite fun to, 
to go around in various locations. And of course, of course, your phone's always in your pocket. You can be a, a, a star party or whatever to get a quick glance of what the sky quality is like. Now, the sky quality does go up and down depending on the moon and other factors and how much cloud. So it's worth doing the same reading in the same location multiple times. And you can see on screen that if you uh, tap in the conditions here, it does give you a list of sky conditions and you can actually submit your own readings to appear on the map section. So if I, for example, this one, I'm going to put mostly cloudy and then I can hit submit and it will submit that to the website so that when you go into the map, your reading will eventually when they update the database appear on there. So it's a really lovely little app. Just a couple of tips on using the app. Obviously you want to avoid any street lighting nearby. So it's best to take your readings in as, in as dark a location as possible away from the light. Obviously that's not possible for everybody. You also want to be avoiding using it when the moon is out at 80% plus let's say because it's going to give you a very false reading. I would really recommend taking multiple readings over multiple nights, maybe in the same spot in your back garden or whatever, and just have the same reading and average it out over five times or, or whatever to get more of an accurate reading, because it is going to change and go slightly up and down depending on cloud, light, moon phases, all of those things will affect the readings. Now, if you've enjoyed today's video, then please hit the subscribe button and like the video. For more content, I tend to produce content every fortnight. Fresh things coming out all the time. I'm going to get to some gear reviews soon and uh, we'll be taking advantage of uh, hopefully some sales coming up. But in the meantime, why don't you use this app to see your sky conditions and post them in the comments? What's the darkest skies that you can get under? Nice little challenge perhaps to see how you get on. I hope you've really enjoyed this video. My name's Martin. You've been watching Adventures in Astronomy. I'll see you soon. Yeah, maybe.